Hello and welcome back. This is video number six. Let's talk about your thumbnail and why that is important. You see, since our goal is to get more clicks or more views to your YouTube video, we have to rely on attracting viewers. So if you think about it, the thumbnail is the first thing people see as they are scanning to find what interests them the most. So in other words, if you think about it, if you go to youtube.com and you type in a keyword, you're going to see all the results with thumbnails, the titles, the descriptions, and all of that. So that's the first thing that they see. So let's discuss what your thumbnail should contain and what's working in your market and how to figure that out. So when it comes to having a thumbnail, you want to make sure that it is eye catching, meaning it shows somebody what they want. So if instant pot chicken is your main keyword, you want to make sure that your thumbnail has something in it that entices them. So it's good to have the keyword or the title in it. So you can see right now the way YouTube works is they have an initial title or an initial thumbnail. And then after that, you can see motion. So if I put my mouse over it, you can actually see part of the video, which makes it a lot more engaging. So as we scroll down, the initial thumbnail that this woman uses is the Instant Pot. And then this one here, it says Instant Pot Recipes. So Instant Pot. So we can see the ones at the top definitely have the Instant Pot in it or a word that's chicken or a picture that has chicken in it. So it fits the keyword. Now, if you're not a professional, you know, thumbnail artist or anything like that, there are different sites that you can use to get these created. Now, bear in mind that you never want to use a thumbnail that is clickbaity or that lies to somebody because if they click on it and then the video is nothing like the thumbnail, then guess what? You might get tons and tons of clicks and perhaps views, but you're not going to get people watching your video, which is very, very important, which we'll discuss in the future videos. But for now, there are different elements that you need. So what I recommend is you go to a site called creativemarket.com. That's creativemarket.com. There are other sites like graphicriver.net, but over time we've realized Creative Market has a lot of really good designs. So what we can do here is in the search box, we're gonna type in YouTube thumbnail. And we're looking specifically for templates that we can use for the thumbnail. So it says YouTube thumbnail pack. Let's go ahead and open that. There's one here. There are end cards, but that's a little bit different. That basically comes at the very end of your video. So we got urban thumbnails, different types of thumbnails. But the reason why I like Creative Market is buying templates for specifically YouTube thumbnails is going to make your life a lot more easier, especially if you can make it professional. The more professional it looks, the more professional they, you know, your viewers will click through. So if we click on this, we can kind of get an idea of what we're dealing with. And here's more thumbnails here as well. Now, over time, we've realized with YouTube thumbnails, more and more designs are becoming minimalistic, meaning it's not too fancy, but it's got just enough information to tell the person what it is all about. So it could have text, it could have pictures, but you really need to know what your YouTube video is about before you can create your thumbnail. In fact, I recommend that you create your YouTube video first and then you create your thumbnail so that you can make sure that you attract 
the right person. Now, what we found a little bit of a technique is to create a thumbnail that is related to essentially the end, meaning if you're creating an instant pot chicken recipe, you might want to show the chicken already cooked. So essentially what people get if they click through. So that way people think, oh, okay, this looks really nice. I'm gonna click through. And they're more likely to actually watch all the way through to the end. And that's what we want. We want people not to just click through, but to watch all the way till the end. And that's actually gonna help us with the ranking. Hello and welcome to video number seven. Let's talk about video length in more depth. So the big question is how long should your video be? While yes, most folks have said that your video should be short due to attention span. And that's something that we've talked about in the past. And that definitely worked in the past. And that still is true that people's attention span are short. But today, in terms of YouTube, your video length should be longer, and here's why. Did you know that YouTube ranks your video based on how many minutes your viewer watches? We talked briefly about this in video number one, but I wanna talk about why that is the case. Statistically speaking, most people that we have found, based on statistics that we have seen in YouTube, most people watch about 50% of a video. Even the people that are interested in a video, they watch 50% of a video. So if that, in this case, is a five minute video, an average viewer is only gonna watch about 2.5 minutes. Now, here's why that is important. If you're competing against someone who has a 30 minute video and their viewers watch 15 minutes, which is about 50%, well, guess what? Even if they can have less viewers than you, they're gonna beat you because they have a longer video. So if you got the 2.5, they've got the 15 minutes, they can send less people and still beat you. And YouTube will favor them in the end. Now that of course is assuming that the views are legitimate and people are actually watching. And that's why user experience is so important. So to give you some real live practical application, let's hop on over to YouTube and I'm gonna show you proof that this works. Okay, so let's take what we learned and what we just discussed and apply it to some real life practical application. So if we head on back over to youtube.com, we type in the keyword instant pot recipes, we can see this one, this one, and this one. So let's go ahead and open these up. So we got this one, this one, and this one. So that's one, two, and three. The first one has about roughly eight minutes or, or nine minutes, we'll say nine minutes. The second one has about 27 minutes. And the third one has about 20 minutes, okay. So essentially the second and third have about double the amount of time. So like we talked about, most people watch about 50% or less and then they quit. That's the average, right? So if that's the case, this person here, even though they have more views, see that 800,000 views, even though they have more views, they're competing with somebody with a 30 minute video essentially it's 27 or 28 but close to 30. so if we round that we'll just say this is 10 this is 30 and this is 20. all right so let's keep it at even numbers so if that's the case there's four minutes here 15 minutes here and 10 minutes here so this means that the person with the less amount of minutes they're going to need a lot more views and a lot more people watching it so in total, if this person has, obviously this person's number one, but what I'm saying here is because YouTube looks at how many minutes are watched, if this person had 800,000 views and this person had only 
half of that amount, but had more than double this amount, this person right here would most likely rank higher. So see that? Only 100,000 views, 15 minutes. This one here, 20 minutes, only 6,000 views. So you might ask, well, shouldn't this be maybe number one? Not necessarily. If we really look at it, so we've got 800 times four minutes, and that's not going to be exact. I mean, we could even take 500. And this is definitely going to be number one. And this is definitely going to be number two based on the information. But this person, because they have a long enough video, even though they have less amount of views, they're still able to rank pretty high. So this is based on one of our YouTube channels, which has over you know, nine millions of minutes watched. And based on that, that's what we've seen. Now, there's other factors like likes, dislikes, comments, and other things like that, titles and descriptions. But that's a big, big, huge ranking factor because it legitimately tells Google and YouTube hey, this YouTube video is legit. Not only people are clicking on it, they're actually viewing it. And they're viewing at least about 50% on average. So that's why the video length is important. Now, you don't want to make a long video just to make a long video. You might want to make a video that has really good content. And that's the goal. It's not based on spammy backlinks or anything like that. It's based on providing real value. Hello and welcome to video number eight. So just want to say congratulations on reaching the end of this video course. We're going to talk about a secret tip that you can use to outrank your competitors. So we briefly talked about why having a longer video was important, right? So one secret tip that we can give you is that what we have found that works is the following. Longer videos in the sense of live streams, which means you get on YouTube and you talk to people live. You have webinar replays and videos where people expect them to be longer. So in other words, people are expecting these to be longer. If you make a normal video that people expect to be five minutes and you make it an hour, then you're not really going to hit that 50%. But when you have a live stream or a webinar replay, usually people typically expect it to be at least one hour. So because people expect it to be one hour or longer, they expect to take time out of their busy schedule to actually watch your longer video. And what we found is these work really well compared to the average video. So let's discuss what you need to do in terms of software or even web applications that you need to create live streams and webinar replays. So in order to create a YouTube live stream, you're gonna need to have a broadcasting software. There are many, you can go to YouTube and type in live stream, how to set it up, and there's a lot of videos on that. But this is one particular one that we have used and that has worked really, really well for us. It's called Open Broadcaster Software, and it's free, best of all. And that is located at obsproject.com. So as you can see here, there is versions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So it's simply as easy as downloading and you can start streaming. So the reason why you need this software is basically what it does is it connects to the YouTube live stream system. And when you're ready, you click record and you're good to go. Now, I'm not going to go in depth on how to use this product just simply because there are so many different options and so many different ways of using it. Now, like I said, the tip is when outranking your competitors to have longer views, this is good for kind of a face-to-face -face talking head type long video. Now, if you want to use a camera, you can do that. If you want to do something like screen capture, meaning you're going to show your screen, then you're going to want to use something like GoToWebinar. 
And you can go to gotomeeting.com slash webinar to do that. Another tool that we have used, which as of now, it is free and who knows, it could change. So GoToWebinar does cost money, but it's a nice way to kind of engage with people. So this is the route that I would go if you are engaging with people. If you're not engaging with people and you're simply doing screen capture, there is a tool called Use Loom. Let me show it to you. So useloom.com, Loom is essentially a Chrome plugin. And what it does is it allows you to record your screen. It's super easy to use. In fact, it's super, super fast. It's so fast that you can literally start recording and within seconds when you're done, you'll have the video in hand. And you can download the actual video file to your computer really fast. So those are the three options that I would go to and really depends on the avenue that you wanna take. So like I said, create a longer video, but just don't create any content, make sure that the content is valuable because you want to make sure that people watch all the way through, or if not, watch at least 